forward to hearing her play anything, but she does that so well. What a beautiful, beautiful song. Let's take our Bibles and go to John chapter 19. John chapter 19, we're going to be again reading in verse 25 down through verse 28. Jesus is on the cross at this time. In verse 25, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, Behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Today, I'd like to preach on Behold Thy Mother. Now, I don't always, I don't always preach topically. Behold the women. Well, that's later. <laughs> don't know how that got wrapped up just yet. I thought, wow, this is getting dramatic. Kind of liked it. But, uh, We'll save the drama a little bit later. It's all right. Don't worry about that. It's probably just attached to the title screen. We'll blame Matt. He's at home. He did it. <laughs> I don't always preach um, a Mother's Day sermon on Mother's Day. You guys know me like that. I don't always, just because of a holiday or because of something, I don't feel led to always have to preach or teach on that topic, but the Lord led me to do that this time. So uh, I want to preach this morning on Behold Thy Mother. Let's ask God's blessing over the message. Father, now it's a wonderful time where your word goes forth. God, we're so happy about all that's preceded this uh, time, Lord, how you've spoken to our hearts through uh, through being able to sing and through hearing music, Lord, uh, I pray, Father, that you'd help that music accomplish what it went forth to do, which is prepare the way for the word of the Lord. I pray you bless us now, bless this message, help me, your servant, as I try to deliver this message, Lord. I pray you'd enable me, Father, that it might be you that is heard and not me. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. And so, of course, I, I'll say it again, happy Mother's Day to everyone, uh, all, all you mothers out there, all you ladies out there. Uh, we love you, and we, we love and appreciate the ladies of our church. We really do. Uh, you know, it's, it's very, very, I mean, just awesome what you guys do. The call goes out, we need help with something, or we need help for this or that. And the ladies are always the first to rally around saying, I can do this. Well, I can do that. Well, I can bring that. Well, you bring that and I'll bring this. And then before you know it, you don't need no more help because they've already they've already taken care of it. So I, I just I, I just want to uh, I want to just commend you for your love to the Lord, uh, your service here and to this church uh, and, and, and my family. We, we love you all. And, you know, uh, this is your special day. It's a day that's set apart for recognition. Now, we know every day mom should be appreciated and loved. It's not just because it's just, well, you get one day a year and that's all you're getting. It's that we should be doing it every day. Uh, same thing with, with God. He made every day. Every day is the Lord's day because he made it. We should rejoice and be glad in it, right? We should give God every single day. Some people won't even give him the one day, but, you know, we should be giving him every day. But the Lord's day is set aside and sanctified 
for the purpose of meeting with him. And so Mother's Day is a day that is sanctified and set apart where we can put the spotlight on you ladies uh, for all the wonderful things that you do and all that you are uh, all year round. You have a labor of love and you're taking care of your families and you know, it's not like the church is all you're taking care of. You've got other things going on, too. You've got your families and your, and your own lives uh, to, to, to organize and to get things going with. And in the church, you just always just jump in there, uh, and it's so wonderful. I want to read a couple things uh, that I found that I think would be really, really good uh, to give us a great idea of, of what mothers do. Because I don't really think that we really, even with this list, it's not exhaustive. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not just, just right there. Uh, you guys do so much more. This is called Mothers and Others. Uh, it's a poem. Others weary of the noise. Mothers play with girls and boys. Others scold because we fell. Mothers kiss and make it well. Others love us more or less. Mothers love with steadiness. Others parting, pardon hating yet. Mothers pardon and forget. Others keep the ancient score. Mothers never shut the door. Others grow incredulous. Mothers still believe in us. Others throw their faith away. Mothers pray and pray and pray. That's by Amos R. Wells. I like that, and I thought, well, this would be a great time to do this now. There's another one that's unknown that I would like to read. Um, and so I, I don't have a long message uh, today, and I know you're like, whew, thank you for that. That's my Mother's Day gift to you. Uh but uh, this one's called Reflections of a Mother. I think this will be a good eye-opener. I gave you life, but cannot live it for you. I can teach you things, but I cannot make you learn. I can give you directions, but I cannot be there to lead you. I can allow you freedom, but I cannot account for it. I can take you to church but I cannot make you believe. I can teach you right from wrong, but I cannot always decide for you. I can buy you beautiful clothes, but I cannot make you beautiful inside. I can offer you advice, but I cannot accept it for you. I can give you love, but I cannot force it upon you. I can teach you to share but I cannot make you unselfish. I can teach you to respect, but I cannot force you to show honor. I can advise you about friends, but cannot choose them for you. I can advise you about virtue, but I cannot keep you pure. I can tell you the facts of life, but I can't build your reputation. I can tell you about drink, but I can't say no for you. I can warn you about drugs, but I can't prevent you from using them. I can tell you about lofty goals, but I can't achieve them for you. I can teach, I can teach you about kindness, but I can't force you to be gracious. I can warn you about sins, but I cannot make you moral. I can pray for you but I cannot make you walk with God. I can tell you how to live, but I cannot give you eternal life. I can love you with unconditional love all of my life, and I will. The author was unknown. But that is the heartbeat of mom. That's the heartbeat of mom. And you know what, Mom, sometimes you, you need to hear. You need to hear about you. You need to hear that these are things and be reminded because too often 
you you take upon you the failures of of the kids that you're raising. But you can't do that. You can only do what you can, but you can't make that or do that for them. They have to do it themselves. Train up in a child in the way they should go. Right? That doesn't mean they're they're not going to stray along the way, but it does give you that little tag of a promise that when they're old, they'll not depart from it. That means it may take some time to grow up, may take some time to learn and experience. Sometimes we have to learn those hurts. And here's another thing I'd like to share before I get into it. You're thinking, okay, now you're getting pretty sherry, preacher. This says, before I was a mom, I made and ate hot meals. I had un unstained clothing. I had quiet conversations on the phone. Before I was a mom, I slept as late as I wanted. I never worried about how late I got into bed. I brushed my hair and my teeth every single day. Before I was a mom, I cleaned my house each day. I never tripped over toys or forgot words to lullabies. Before I was a mom, I had never been puked on or other, other things, spit on, chewed on, and you all know the rest of those. No need to even mention that. Or pinched uh, by, or, or, or was pinched by tiny fingers. Before I was a mom, I had complete control of my thoughts, my body, my mind, and I slept all night. Before I was a mom, I never looked into teary eyes and cried. I never got gloriously happy over a simple grin. I never sat up late hours at night watching a baby sleep. Before I was a mom, I never held a sleeping baby just because I didn't want to put it down. I never felt my heart break into a million pieces and when I couldn't stop the hurt. I never knew that something so small could affect my life so much. I never knew that I could love someone so much. I never knew I would love being a mom. Before I was a mom, I didn't know the feeling of having my heart walk around outside my body. I didn't know how special it could feel to feed a hungry baby. I didn't know the bond between mother and her child. I didn't know that something so small could make me feel so important. Before I was a mom, I had never gotten up in the middle of the night every 10 minutes to make sure all was okay. I'd never known the warmth, joy, the love, the heartache, the wonderment, or the satisfaction of being a mom. I didn't know I was capable of feeling so much before I was a mom. Man, that gives some perspectives on moms. So as I thought about Mother's Day and my thoughts once again are turned to the Lord Jesus and Calvary, I've been preaching, uh, of course, we, we've been preach. we always preach the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. That's the gospel. That's the message that guarantees the power of God unto salvation. So uh, I, I, I want to do continue that. And in the verses I read, we find our Lord as he was dying on the cross. He's taking care of Mary, his earthly mother. He was God and he was man. As a man, he loved his mother. And I want to give you a few thoughts on for this Mother's Day that will help you uh and uh, help you guys, it'll help you, and uh, it'll help your wife or mother. Number one, love her. Ephesians 5, 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Proverbs 10, 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, let thy fountain be blessed 
and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as a loving hind, a pleasant row. It goes on and on about how to love, and then secondly, respect her. First Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now, honor means to kind of place on a pedestal to reverence her, but, you know, we've, we've got to be careful how we treat them, and that goes for kids, too. You ought to be careful how you treat your mom, how you treat your dad, but it's mom's day. We're going to focus on mom today. Dad's, we, we, get, we get ours next month, but Proverbs fifteen twenty it says, a wise son maketh the glad father, the foolish man despiseth his mother. Proverbs 20, 20 says, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. So you better be careful how you talk to mom. You disrespect mama and you get in trouble with God. That's what the Bible says. I didn't make that verse up. It's there. Look it up. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11, there's a generation that Curse of their father and doth not bless their mother. Uh, in verse 17 of that same chapter, the eye that mocketh at his father despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Right on out of there. Going to pluck that eye out and show you how wicked you are. That's some scary stuff. Proverbs 31, 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Place her on a pedestal everywhere. Moms are worth it. And they don't get anywhere near what they should get. Nowhere in the same zip code do moms get what they deserve in, in love and honoring and respecting by by everyone. You know, sometimes us husbands, we're, we're not that great at, at remembering to do that. We get busy with stuff, and we, you know, of course, we've got all our excuses lined up, don't we, guys? I mean, we, you know, goes right back to those. I mean, think about those guys in the Bible, times that refused the wedding invitation. I've married, and therefore I cannot come. I mean, he they just started, and he was already putting her down. So that that that's not even a good thing. But we do, we got to do better. Remember, thirdly, remember her. You see how fast these are going? I'm already at three. See, you, you guys, you guys, you'll appreciate that. Proverbs 31.10, who can find a virtuous woman? For her, her price is far above rubies. Sometimes her labor and love and strength go unnoticed by her family, which is an absolute shame. Stuff gets done, and we don't pay attention. I, I, I'm guilty, 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 guilty. I could walk in the house. It could be immaculate. And I won't even I won't even say anything for a while. Then all of a sudden I I hear, uh, did you notice anything? <laughs> did you notice anything? Uh, does the house look pretty decent? Oh well, yeah, yeah, it looks great. No, duh, yeah, I just walked in and everything looks great. I observed it, but I never said anything right out the door. Now I should have stopped and go, whoa, this is awesome. Their work goes unnoticed sometimes because that's how moms are. Moms will get up and they'll be they'll be they'll be doing stuff. We're we're in there snoring and shaking the walls, guys, and they're out they're out doing stuff and being up with the kids and trying to take care of them if they're sick or trying to you know if they had a nightmare they're trying to they're trying to calm them down and reassure them and do all these things and we sleep through some of the the great stuff that moms do. And so we we got to we got to do better. We got to do better about that, guys. We need to remember her. Relish her. This is the last point. Can you believe that? Wasn't that fast? 
Now, when I say relish, I don't mean put her on a hot dog. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? I had to throw a little funny in there. You know I need to try at least. Now, Proverbs 23, 22. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. <laughs> you know, there's a... There's really something about that because I find a lot of times and we see it often where the mother gets a little well stricken in years and then the next thing you know, everybody's too busy for mom. The Bible says not to do that. The Bible says not to get too busy for mom. And we shouldn't do that. We need to we need to not not be that way. We should we should still really appreciate, you know, my I'm fortunate enough to have my mom right here in this auditorium with me today. Uh, she's still going pretty strong. And uh, my mom is great. I mean, she's she's the beacon of wisdom. She is always trying to you're trying to try to steer somebody in the right direction. But there's things about mom that you don't know that are cool side, her cool side. Did you know this woman is cool? It means I'm about to explain it, Mom. I, I heard you. Like, what does that mean? You're cool because everything that I learned about doing voices I got from my mother. Because she always tried to make things fun, and she would talk in a different accent, or she would try to do something, uh, and, and just little phrases. It was never long, but it was it was her way of, of the playing and interactive playing like that, and that I I just I just soaked that in, and so I learned a lot about how fun it could be to do voices and and change your accent and and, and do all that stuff that I that I'm kind of known for now doing that stuff but I got my love of that from my mom I don't even know if you know that or not but you do now and I said it publicly and it's on Facebook for the world but I mean it's the small sometimes you don't even know what you're doing and is going to have an impact moms the little things like that that you think are insignificant, that's just a moment between us, that can impact for a lifetime. And, 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 and take us in a great direction with that. So uh, you don't, don't think, you know, don't, don't think those little things are always going to be unnoticed. They're really not. They may not be spoken about right away, which, you know, we're bad for that. And the kids are bad for that. You know, the return you get on the, the love you give your children always comes later on in life. It, you never get that gratification. And that's that's the thing that really stinks about, about what moms do because they pour themselves into their children. They pour themselves into their husbands, their families. And, it, and the, they never get that instant gratification feedback. Especially with the kids, because we're just going on our business. Us kids, we're boop, right. We, we got tunnel vision right to the next thing. We don't think about what mom just did. We don't think about what mom just told us. We don't think about what sacrifice mom had. Like I read some of those sacrifices. Sometimes you, you know, moms they're the last to get a, a hot meal. I. You know, sometimes they don't even get hot meals because by the time you served everybody and you're ready to sit down with yours, somebody's somebody's already a hurricane wolf that thing down and wants more. And you're like, okay, I don't want you to burn yourself on the gravy. So here, let me go. And then mom's just setting her plate down and going to take and get more. And then she gets that kid set up. And then the next one, eat it now, taste it later. Hey, can I have some more, mom? Oh, sure, sure, sure. 
Meanwhile, Dad. Wah, 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 wah. Man, honey, this is good. Oh, is it? I haven't had a lick of it yet. Could use a little help here, dear. And we don't even look, man. We we look at our plate and that's it. We're not even looking at the kids. We just look at our plate. We're eating the good stuff that mom's made. And then here's mom. Her her food, the temperature is waning. It's going away. <laughs> And they sit down, finally, everybody's, oh, that's so great. Oh, I got a lazy boy with my name on it. Feet up, solid logs. Kids off making a mess somewhere. Mom's at the table sitting there eating something cold by herself. After prepping all the food, cooking all the food, sweating to death, you have a towel for the food, you have the towel for you. You know, uh, all these different things. And mom does all these things, but they don't get that. Oh, thank you, mom. They don't get that. That was so good. They don't get that. Oh, mom, sit down. Let me, let, I'll get some myself. They don't get that. I got a rule in my house. I'll serve you once. And, of course, mine are older, a little bit older. So I'm like, I, I'll, I'm going to lay it all out for y'all. But after that, if you want more, self-serve. Keep your arms tucked in. Don't touch it. If there's steam coming off of it, use a utensil. I'll advise you from the kit from the table. Right? Don't, they don't get that until maybe years later. Years later, when they get up, they grow up, and they get married, and they become the mother. Or the fa sometimes even the father with, when, with, with, with boys that grow up. I didn't appreciate as much as I needed to appreciate what my parents did. I had no idea any of what they went through as adults. I'm just I'm just buzzing around like 50 miles like Flash Gordon. I'm just going everywhere and, and, and you know, burning up my calories and going to the fridge to see what there is. Go back five minutes later to see if anything changed. Uh, the, the food in the fridge don't have to always change, but your attitude might. Your appetite might, right? But, like, I never understood what it was like to, to have to, until I had to grow up and I got married and I realized when I go to my refrigerator, it's going to be empty unless I put something in it. That means I got to go buy something to put in it. That means I got to have money to go buy something to put in it. That means I have to have a job and work to earn money so that I could go buy stuff to put in it. You don't take you take everything for granted. You do. All you see is that the toilet paper never runs out. The, you 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 see and pra praise God for that. Amen. That's a need. You know the shampoo and conditioner is always there. So you're like, Woo! <laughs> and you're in there and it's going everywhere. I mean, not even taking into account. They gotta replace this, which means they gotta buy that. And maybe there's so many other things. And then, you know, then you you start realizing, oh, look what all you have to pay for. Look at all the bills that you have coming at you every 30 days. That stinks. You kids are all wanting to grow up. Slow your roll, because you're going to be crying later. You're going to be crying the blues. What? I missed the days when I didn't have to worry about squat. I didn't have to worry about nothing. 
I had it all there, and we had good food back then. Back then, you could fill up your refrigerator with steaks and all kinds of great stuff for 50 bucks. Now, 50 bucks was harder to earn back there, just as hard as it is now. The work has changed. The value has changed a lot. Supply has changed a lot. But what I'm saying, I said all that to say that we need to try to, well, see, you, you're going to get that. You, you're going to get that return, but it's a long investment. It's like a 401k or something. You, you cash it in, you know, 20 or 30 years down the road. So it's hard to see that, and it's hard to go through that because you just want validated for what you do. You just want somebody to appreciate the fact that you thought about them. And, you know, I, I'm fortunate to have a wonderful, amazing wife. I've got great kids. But they need to be better. I need to be better. Because she deserves more than what we've given her. Way more. Man. Sometimes I, I think that's why God keeps me down on, on the low financial end because he knows I would, I, and I did that when we dated because I had money to do it at the time. You spoil them. Man, dating is, man, it's like just, I don't know. It's expensive. No wonder people are like dating for six weeks and then getting hitched because you all need the income. Can't afford to date you anymore. Let's get married. You're expensive. <laughs> you're worth it, but you're expensive. Oh, Ecclesiastes 9.9. 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. So unfortunately, if Jesus tarries his coming, she's not going to be around. And just a show of hands, how many people have a mother in heaven again? Take a look around. Look how many people have their hand up. Okay, I think you can put them down. Hey, moms don't last. Neither do dads. We're not guaranteed to have them. So we got to do right by them. Because you know what? You might spend all this time thinking, boy, I'm really going to, I'm really going to, yeah, we're going to shower mom with love. But what happens when if God takes her before you get that chance? And you, are, you live a life of regret. So that's all I have for this morning. Right on the button, noon. I'm getting, I've gotten this dialed in here. So I want to once again wish each dear lady... This morning, a very, very special Mother's Day. Be patient with us. We're, we're, we're coming around. I hope that the message will help us to come around. I, I, I definitely want that. That's the ideal goal. But let's, let's show the love while we can, amen? That's what we need to do. All right, so 